record. So good day to all of you nurses out there that might be paying uh, attention to this little presentation that we've made for you today. My name is Jessica Madrid and I am a nurse and a nurse climate champion. So the presentation that we've developed for you today is intended to be a brief, informative overview of this amazing initiative, the Nurses Climate Challenge. And this is the Canadian version. So to orient you Canadian nurses out there to this great initiative that we're happy to bring to you. And I'm joined by our amazing American colleague, Shanda, and she'll be introducing herself in a moment here. And so, yeah, here we have this, uh, this great little presentation for you to hopefully share with you the main things that we want you to know about the Nurses Climate Challenge and Canada. We can go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, I am uh, I'm a frontline nurse, Jessica or Jessica, either one of those names, and I am also the president, the current president of the Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment, and we are a specialty interest group under the Canadian Nurses Association, and it's my pleasure to be speaking about this great initiative. And now I'm going to turn it over to you, Shanda, to introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Jessica. Hello, everybody. Shanda Demarest here, and I too am a nurse by background. I'm joining you today as the leader of the Nurses Climate Challenge out of the US and the very humble partner of Jessica and the Canadian Alliance of Nurses for the Environment in this effort. And I work with Practice Green Health as a member engagement manager. So working on all things environmental sustainability within hospitals and health systems. And I'm also affiliate faculty at the University of Minnesota School of Nursing. So back to you, Jessica. Awesome, thanks so much, Shanda. So as I was mentioning, uh, this is really intended to be a easy to listen to conversational presentation, but to give you a little bit more of a sense of what you can expect, we want to just start off by talking about why nurses, what is the place of nurses in the role of climate change adaptation and mitigation, so that's where we'll start our little presentation today. We're also, of course, going to give you a bit more background on this initiative itself, a little bit of a history of the Nurses Climate Challenge, and then, of course, how Canada came to be involved in that. We'll go through the toolkit, this wonderful online toolkit that's available to you. We'll speak to that, that resource for you a little bit more specifically in this presentation. And we'll also talk about a, a couple of interesting opportunities that are related to this, such as the School of Nursing Partnership as it relates to the Nurses Climate Challenge, and also a really interesting tool called CHANT, or the Climate Health and Nursing Tool. So a couple of little, little extra interesting things for you at the end of the presentation. All right, we can go to the next slide. Thanks, Shanda. So as I was mentioning, why nurses? Why healthcare professionals? Why is that significant when we talk about climate change adaptation and mitigation? Well, as I'm sure all of the nurses on this call know, or on this that are listening to this webinar know, we are pretty much the most trusted professional out there. And that is something that I know a lot of us nurses, we wear as a huge badge of pride and honor that the public really does listen to what we have to say i mean not only are we educated in the sciences but we're you know present in so many different locations we're with people in their vulnerable moments there are a lot of reasons why the public trusts nurses and so and again you know bearing in mind that we have this background in the sciences i mean we can understand really what's happening with these changes that are happening in our environment and in our climate and how that impacts human health. And we can translate that for the public as well. And of course, you know, we're professionals too. We're all guided by a code of ethics. We have regulatory bodies. So that also, of course, leads to our credibility and our trust. And as I was mentioning too, yeah, we're with people in all kinds of settings all across the lifespan. So we really have that honor and privilege of being with people in so many different ways and in so many different spaces. And so, as of course, the slide mentions a little bit more clearly, you know, nurses understand what's happening with the climate and how it interfaces with human health. And then, of course, in this, in this uh, Nurses Climate Challenge and in the tools that we have for you, it'll hopefully equip you even better to understand the links between climate change and the effects on human health. And yeah, it's our, it's our job. It's our job as nurses to address 
these types of things, um, you know, the, the effects of climate change and our health. It's definitely something that the CNA has really clearly embedded now that it is very important for nurses to be engaged in issues like uh, planetary health, as it's being called more and more now, rather than environmental health and in climate change mitigation and adaptation. And yeah, we're in a really awesome place right now to help our patients that are at risk to be ready for the adaptation and the mitigation strategies uh, that go hand in hand with what's happening with our climate these days. Absolutely. Yeah. Jessica, I love the way that you described, I mean, really just the connection between being humans on the planet and our role as nurses and caring for those humans and what that means. And we're, we're recording this webinar in February 2021. And so, I mean, the, the last year plus has been really challenging. Um, you know, of course, not only for us in the United States and Canada, but across the whole globe. And I think we're really starting to talk more about and better understand this intersectionality of environmental health or planetary health, human health, things like zoonotic diseases in the pandemic, things like environmental justice and social determinants of health and racial equity. And so this, this meshing that has always existed in reality is becoming more to the forefront. And as nurses, we really need to be adept at working with our patients at that intersection and addressing all the spokes of the wheel collectively. And that's really hard. Um, but hopefully today, Jessica and I will, will guide you through some suggestions for how to approach climate change in the context of human health. Thank you so much for that, Shanda. That is a really important context to add to this. And yes, if you could tell us a little bit more about this Nurses Climate Challenge, because to be honest, like it was probably about mm, maybe three years ago now or something like that. I'm working my frontline job in a rural clinic. And of course, I, I, I have been affiliated with CANE or the Canadian Association of Nurses for the Environment for, for a very long time. Uh, but I, as a frontline nurse, got an email about this initiative, the Nurses Climate Challenge. And I thought, whoa, this is like a whole package of tools to help me do something that I really want to do. But I don't really have a lot of time to think about like, how can I how can I even begin to bring climate change into my work? I'm working in this tiny rural clinic. I've got an ER. I'm doing public health stuff, but this is important. I come across this initiative, and wow! So, Shanda, tell us a little bit more about the Nurses Climate Challenge. Mm, I love telling the story. Um, so, back about five years ago. Um, I was actually working at the University of Minnesota School of Nursing as full-time faculty. And for faculty out there, you, you know, you have a certain amount of time that you dedicate towards big S or little s scholarship. And it had always been my dream to work really closely with organizations in this climate and health space to, to build something and reached out to Healthcare Without Harm and Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments, which are the other two key sponsors of this project. And we talked about um, really what a vision for a nursing campaign or nursing collaborative around climate and health could look like. And that was really where the brainchild was born with those two organizations together. And when we think about climate and the big, big work that we need to do to draw down our carbon out of the atmosphere, to reduce emissions, to mitigate future climate change. We know that nurses and everybody need to take action, but a big challenge that we were fronted with right away is we weren't certain that nurses really knew enough about climate change to feel compelled to take action on it from a professional standpoint. Now, perhaps personally, but we also worked with uh, you know, a, a pretty big group of content experts across the United States and came to a little bit of a conclusion that nurses also were not confident about this connection between climate change and human health impact. So if nurses aren't confident about how climate change impacts human health and how that ties in with their professional responsibility to care for humans, 
we couldn't necessarily make the assumption that nurses were ready to take action on climate change as healthcare professionals to protect human health. Maybe it was a personal interest in climate action, um, but, but really this content was not really being addressed widespread. And there's still a lot of work that we, we nurses collectively need to do to address this, um, but that was what formed this educational campaign. So we want to encourage action and mitigation and reduction and adaptation. But we know that nurses need to know what climate change means before we do that. And so launched in 2018, basically we first had this small collection of resources called Take the Challenge. And we had resources relating to um, basic education about the climate health uh, impacts. We had resources related to some some suggestions for taking action, um, but they were really based on a clinical setting. We had some content about how to communicate about climate change because that's really challenging. Um, but it wasn't until a couple years later that we really started gaining momentum with the nurses who were registering to, to access these resources saying, we want more community facing content. We want more resources that will help us be advocates and talk about climate and energy policy. Um, and so with the ultimate goal of educating 50,000 health professionals um, by these nurse climate champions, people like Jessica and, and yourself, um, we realized that we needed to broaden our resources for a wider audience. And that's what led us to create many more of the resources that, um, that we'll walk you through today. Uh, I, I love that. I don't know if I've actually ever heard you tell the story <laughs> in that way. Thanks, Shanda. Yeah, you're and, welcome. Um, yeah, and then, so how does that then kind of, how do we then get Nurses Climate Challenge Canada? And so only just to say to, to our listeners today that, again, you know, using myself as, a, as an example of a frontline nurse, as I was clicking through the, the resources, learning about them, figuring which ones I could use, while while the utility of the nurses climate challenge was still super high uh, as a Canadian working with an American initiative, of course we have some really obvious differences between our nations that have to do with our healthcare systems, our political systems, and so the thought then became, well, you know, maybe maybe if things were tweaked to, to again reflect those differences in our healthcare systems and our political systems, it would be more useful for the Canadian nurse. And our organization, Kane, had you know, even kind of toyed about like doing like a parallel project or something like that too, but holy smokes, that would have been a lot of work. And so we were delighted when we approached Shanda and the Nurses Climate Challenge uh, to discuss the possibility of maybe making a, a Canadianized version of the of the challenge, if that would be doable. And, and what great news that it was, um, that it was possible, that the team was keen to work with us. And so, that's what we've been doing over this last year is uh, going through the resources that are part of this amazing toolkit that we're going to share with you shortly and really tailoring it as much as possible with Canadian resources, Canadian statistics, language that reflects the fact that we have, of course, our, you know, Canadian healthcare system, which is greatly different from the American system. And, you know, also, of course, differences in uh, how um, our political systems are structured, you know, we, um, yeah, we, we have we have a prime minister, we don't have a president, all these little nuances that can make, again, the resources all the more usable um, when it when we think about advocacy and things like that. So yeah, uh, this really reflects a year of work and getting these Canadianized tools here for you. And as you'll know, in the upper right corner of the slide, when you go to the website, you'll see that uh, there's US Canada, and our Canadian resources are embedded in there, which you'll see coming up here. But also just for fun, I, I wanted to highlight that Europe is now on board too. So that's really exciting too, that this initiative is growing internationally. This is now an international movement, eh, Shanda? Mm -hmm. yes. And I definitely need to say thank you, Jessica, and everyone at Kane who nudged us to say, hey, why don't these resources apply more to people outside of the United States? And that's really what encouraged us to embark upon this partnership and say, well, hey, help us and we'll get these puppies online. Um, so it, this does reflect a year of work and we're very, very excited um, to, to share that with you. 
And Jessica, as you mentioned, um, so Europe is now on board as well, but there's really been a lot of momentum outside of, um, you know, U.S., Canada, and Europe. We're sharing um, these resources with close to 1,500 nurses across the globe now. Um, we have presence in almost all of the U.S. states. And we have a lot of momentum already in Canada. So we have 87 nurses across the country that um, have already registered and are already, well, have already been looking at the U.S. resources. So now there will be a brand new um, collection to share. And you can see that um, and the, the pie graph on the right shows how many individuals who have been educated by these nurse climate champions using these online resources that is helping our campaign track up to 50,000 health professionals. So we're getting there bit by bit and it's bit by bit intentionally, this is a grassroots effort. And so every single nurse educating his or her colleagues about this or their students, uh, we are very grateful to them. So I'd like to just take a moment to give you an idea of what a nurse climate champion looks like. And Jessica, you received an email in your inbox one day and that's how many people learn about this. Of course, we re rely upon word of mouth and organizations like Kane and um, other counterparts to be sharing about the Nurses Climate Challenge. And this slide shows uh, sort of the outlay of what different nurse climate champions, what their, their practice or their walk of life looks like. And so you can, this, this data is based on um, some, some data analyzed back in 2019 that um, we pulled from the cohort of nurse climate champions at that time. So it has grown since. Um, but you can see that there is a large percentage of our nurses that are doing work as direct care professionals, so as staff nurses, and they're teaching their colleagues and um, even their patients about climate change. So that's in red. You can see um, educators make up a large percentage as well, about a quarter of our nurse climate champions, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this is being used in universities shortly. And then looking at all the other colors, we have students, we have community facing nurses, we have researchers, um, we have people within advanced practice roles. And so anybody, any nurse can be a nurse climate champion. And there is a way to, um, to utilize these resources in whatever way you see fit. So this is a, just a, a one screenshot of a landing page um, on our nurse climate, Nurses Climate Challenge resources. And I'm just, I want to highlight up at the top, you see region here, it has a little asterisk after it. So when you come to the site, make sure that if um, you want to access the Canadian resources that you select Canada, and you can actually choose from categorical drop downs, what types of resources you'd like to look at. And so this wasn't sorted by any filter at this point, um, but you can sort by practice settings. You can sort by advocacy or education. Um, so Jessica, should we dig into what some of the specifics of those resources are? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay. Um, so I can just kick it off here shortly. And, and I noted that there are a few different categorical areas with resources within them. We have 23 in total. We'll get this webinar uploaded online as well. So that'll make us up to, uh, I think, 24. But um, as I mentioned, the take the challenge was really the bread and butter. I liked, I love bread and butter. So I like you to know, <laughs> but that's the bread and so butter good. of the resources um, originally. And they've expanded since. And so in the Take the Challenge, that's where you can find that PowerPoint, that's where you can find um, additional resources around communicating, et cetera. Um, but I'm curious, Jessica, like, what have you found um, compelling or useful in, in the context that you're using these in your own setting? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Shanda. And I, as I know we've touched on, like I could, I could say positive things about literally every single one of these resources. 
to be really honest, like from a personal perspective, I really appreciated the two PowerPoint presentations that are embedded in the Nurses Climate Challenge toolbox because I'm not super, I'm not, a, it's, it's not my high skill set in developing PowerPoint presentations and then the notes that go along with it. So, oh my goodness, like just the fact that there are two ready-made PowerPoint presentations presentations here, a short one and a long one complete with notes so that, again, a frontline nurse, like, you know, perhaps some of the, the nurses that are listening today, literally, it's all they're prepared for you. All you would have to do is familiarize yourself with the notes content, and then you could deliver that presentation to any peers that might be interested in it. And, and, it's, and it's just all there and just needs you, the presenter, to deliver the material. So that really shone for me when I was first kind of exploring these resources. And, and again, really with, with a mind that I could, I could praise a lot of these things. Uh, I, I also really appreciated some of the tools that are available that deal with, um, with social media, because as much as I want to be, I'm not the most social media savvy person yet. So uh, as you'll note, you know, there's some resources there that talk about, you know, how to maximize your use of social media, like Twitter around um, sharing this messaging, the content of the Nurses Climate Challenge, or the selfie video tips. I mean, we're we're 2021, we're really in a world where this is how a lot of us are getting our information. So how cool is it that we have, again, some practical tools there that can help the nurse that maybe isn't feeling like super savvy in using those really powerful tools of social media to get messages out there to do with, um, to do with climate health uh, out to the public. And um, I think it's also maybe just worthwhile to mention that, of course, you know, as you, the Canadian nurse, maybe starts to go through some of these, that, you know, some of the, the content will, will still be American. And, you know, there is the Environmental Health and Nursing e-textbook, for example, that, you know, of course, we just didn't necessarily have something at the time of our compiling the resources that was Canadian and on par. Uh, but nonetheless, super useful. And as I know, many of us Canadian nurses are, are used to, you know, there's a lot of wonderful American resources that, that we use, you know, we're, we're right across, uh, you know, we share a border, we're sister nations in many respects. So yeah, may that just be really uh, salient from the get go that there will, of course, be some really useful American content still in here, but where possible, we did strive to make it as much Canadian content as possible. But I highlight that example specifically because, you know, as you noted, Shanda, like I think many, many nurses out there, there, you know, there's an appreciation for the health impacts of climate change and as it relates to human health. Uh, however, if you really wanted to know more, I mean, there's there's a really concrete um, e-textbook there for you if you really want to delve into the science some more and, you know, really um, yeah, strengthen the foundation that you're standing on when it comes to understanding that relationship too. So yeah, admittedly, that's another one that shines for me in terms of really informing oneself so that you can then, of course, uh, inform others. Um, of, of course, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to ask you, Shanda, are there any that, that shine for you in your work with, uh, with the Nurses Climate Challenge over these years? Sure, yeah. Um, I have really enjoyed using the letter to the editor guidelines um, and some of even the, the meeting scripts for meeting with a legislator. Yeah. Um, those, those are, they're difficult. It's really hard to be a climate advocate as sort of a citizen. And I think these resources are really, really important because we know that our leaders need to be hearing our voice. Um, and there's not always a direct line from the bedside to the leader's ear. So those I think have been um, really good tools, almost copy paste tools in some instances. Um, so I'd encourage folks to check those out. Yeah, let's show a couple more in some, some detail here, Jessica. So, yeah. so these are, they're just some screenshots. Um, what we have on the left, we actually have basically like a, an electronic poster that if you work with your um, nurse manager, or you work with a leader within your university, for instance, and say, I would love to host a climate change and health event, you can actually just pull this right offline, download it on the Microsoft Word, and type in all the details of your event right on there and share it out. Kane's logo is right on the bottom. Um, the one on the right is just an overview of how nurses can help with climate change. 
and you'll see that um, there are links within. So we have um, content related to Health Canada embedded, and we have all sorts of um, specific um, references to materials where you know you can dig down deeper and learn a little bit more so that you feel confident about the content that you're sharing. Um, but there are all sorts of these online. Let's look at this next one too, because I know that this was um, one of your favorites, Jessica. Um, yeah, this is the, the tips and tricks for having difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about this one. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, in our conversation, Chanda, I also, I also was saying that this one was definitely rising to the top of some of my particular favorites in the Nurses Climate Challenge toolbox, because I, I do think that it is one of the big reasons that, you know, that we as nurses or just as individuals that, you know, have this concern, it, it's an impediment is, you know, how do I deal with the person that's going to, you know, really naysay climate change that's, you know, going to just basically come up with a rebuttal for whatever I say. Is there a way that I can focus my language or focus the conversation or particular resources that might help inform my stance a little bit more? And, and this for me was a resource that really helped to tackle some of those, those challenges and those questions when it comes to presenting this material here too. So yeah, a lot of really useful little items in this particular resource. Uh, again, just noting that again, the, the content is largely coming from American sources. Nonetheless, I think it's still super useful out there for any Canadian nurse that's looking to, yeah, to, to get a little bit of support in preparing them to have what might be a difficult conversation. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. these conversations go really smoothly and you maybe you'll be surprised to realize that there's actually a lot of folks out there that feel the same way that you do, but maybe just haven't had someone else, um, yeah, just really situated in the context of healthcare or in the context of our nursing profession. So just, just some food for thought on that front, I think. Yeah, thank you. And I, your comment about this being more US oriented is absolutely true. And I think it can serve as a tool to just remind nurses from other nations, um, what are the cultural implications of talking about climate change? What are some terms to use? What are some terms to avoid? And just a little more thought behind um, going into that conversation about climate change and health. So think about it within the Canadian um, context, of course. Absolutely, well put. So I just want to um, share a little bit more about how some of our nurse climate champions have historically shared this content um, with their colleagues. And this is actual data that we've pulled from the people participating in the Nurses Climate Challenge. A lot of staff and um, other Nurse Climate Champions have talked about this within green team meetings, maybe within their, uh, within their hospital or health system. Um, some share at governance meetings, depending on the structure of their health system. Um, leadership meetings, staff meetings, of course, grand rounds. Um, you can see that there's a pretty large presence within universities and conferences, other educational settings like that. Um, some pretty unique um, clinic education materials. Some nursing students have taught their preceptors about the Nurses Climate Challenge, for instance, and even in break rooms. So I thought this was fairly interesting to see where this really happens on the ground with our people. Absolutely. And one more note is that um, it's, it's really challenging sometimes to stay engaged in an effort. And when we set this goal of reaching 50,000 health professionals with this climate and health content, uh, we, we have that, that pie graph tracker that I showed you on one slide. And basically that is a real time updated metric for how many people have been educated. And the way that folks um, basically are able to enter their content is there's a little bar right up on the top that says activity log and you can submit an activity and it's just three data fields really simple how many people did you educate what resource did you use where did you do it and then there are optional places for you to add more information if you'd like so as you um, get more and more involved in this 
please do track because it helps us all get closer to our metrics. And um, of course, uh, in the interest of, of sharing and being more connected digitally, Jessica has um, alluded to this. Please do share this content, help us recruit. Um, there's a web link on one of the final slides. We have a presence on Twitter, and I know we've, we've already been connecting with many of the nurses out of Kane and supporting each other's work and vice versa. Um, so please tweet us, check us out, tell us what you're doing um, as a nurse climate champion, tell us who you're educating, um, and just engage with us in conversation about climate change, human health, um, and supporting nursing leadership in social media. And we also have a fun nurses climate challenge, uh, selfie challenge video. This is um, right on the landing page for the resources. And so you'll hear from, these are American nurse climate champions. Um, but if you would like to create your own video, I'm sure Kane would be interested. Wink, wink, Jessica. <laughs> um, and pulling together some videos and, and hearing more about um, what you all are up to related to this and why you are a nurse climate champion and why you are talking about climate change in the context of patient health. And I would be remiss if I didn't call out um, our, our highlighted profiled nurse climate champions. And you'll see in the top left that um, Jessica was the highlighted of the first quarter of 2021. And so really, Jessica, your work with Kane has been absolutely astounding. Uh, we look to you for leadership um, for so much. And this process could not have gone forward without you. Um, and so please do read the profile, everybody, and um, learn a little bit more about Jessica's background and what brought her to this work. And I've gotten to hear the story in little bits and pieces over the last year or so, but reading it all in full, um, you're such an inspiration. You're so cool. I love it. Um, Thank and it's you, been a pleasure you too. To work with you. <laughs> and there's so many other <laughs> amazing nurses out there, aren't there, Shanda? Like, that's what mm -hmm. I really um, just, oh, it's warming my heart so much these days in doing this work is realizing that, you know, we are not alone. If you're listening to this presentation mm -hmm. and you're, and it's, it's resonating with you just to know that there are so many other nurses out there that are right there with you and they're concerned and they're passionate. And we really are this amazing team out there and we are increasingly becoming connected and, and, and internationally connected too. It's, it's a really important time and it's a really critical time to have more good nurses involved in this work. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you mentioned um, the School of Nursing Partnership a little bit earlier, Jessica, and I, I want to bring this back up. So one um, avenue that we are pursuing is working with schools of nursing to use the Nurses Climate Challenge um, within their curricula, within their coursework as faculty. And so far, um, we have 20 schools of nursing in the United States and one school of nursing in Colombia um, that has committed to integrating this content. And um, Jessica, I'm curious, I know we've talked a little bit about Canadian schools of nursing having some interest about this in the past, but do you foresee, um, yeah, do you foresee something like this being useful for nursing faculty in your country? Absolutely, absolutely. And I know certainly within our within our board of directors of Kane, we have some really amazing faculty that are involved with that that I that I know are really keen to get Nurses Climate Challenge happening more in the schools of nursing that they're affiliated with. And what an exciting time it is now to to now have the resources complete and the resources are live. And I think in 2021, we are definitely going to see some Canadian schools of nursing hop on board. Awesome. All right, and my, my last little note before I'll hand it back to you. Um, so this, uh, this survey tool, the climate health and nursing tool is, is really applicable for any nurse or any nursing student, any retired nurse anywhere. Um, so this was actually established about five years ago, right around the same time that the Nurses Climate Challenge was born. And 
Um, ultimately, you know, as we're doing research to see more about what the intersection of nursing and climate was, and was there, um, you know, really, was there any significant investigation into how nurses understood climate change and how they behaved towards reducing um, climate, uh, climate emissions and how they were motivated or demotivated to take action. So we really found an opportunity to, to do some more evaluation in that space. And, and that's what led to the CHANT tool, so CHANT for short. And basically this is a psychometrically developed, uh, valid, reliable survey tool that um, is open to all health professionals at this point. I know it still has nursing in the title, but we have it in three languages. And basically nurses identify um, where they fall on a spectrum within those domains of knowledge, behavior, awareness, and motivation. So we analyze the results every year. Um, our 2019 results are soon to be published in the Public Health Nursing Journal. So stay tuned. Um, but in the meantime, please take the survey um, and share it. So Jessica, I would like to hand it back to you to close this out here. Absolutely, Shanda. This has been really great. And I really hope that the nurses that are listening to this out there are, are getting something useful as kind of um, a starting point for what I hope is going to be your work as a nurse climate champion. But absolutely, here is the web page for you. We hope that you take a click on that website and that you join that you register, that you become a nurse climate champion with us, because you're definitely not alone, as hopefully this presentation is shared with you today. You've got a lot of fellow nurses here in Canada already that have signed up, and obviously so many more in our, in our sister country across the border and in the world beyond. So absolutely give a click of the link, register, join. Uh, of course, Kane is here to support the, the Nurses Climate Challenge as well. So if there's anything our organization can do to help any Nurse Climate Champion out there, then absolutely feel free to, to connect with our organization, Kane, as well. And yeah, we're just really excited to be at the precipice of what I know is going to be more good work out there on what is, you know, uh, a challenge that we're all in together, every one of us on this globe. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we have uh, we have those websites there at the bottom, definitely Healthcare Without Harm. If you haven't checked out their website, it is an amazing organization. Same thing with the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments. They are, they are basically like our cane equivalent, but in the States. And they are obviously a, a wonderful, large organization with lots of tools that you can use in your work on climate change mitigation and adaptation too. So we always encourage our Canadian nurses to be checking out um, the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments or ANI's resources as well. And then, of course, there's our website for Kane. They're at the bottom for you, too. And Kane is always looking for, for more members, too, to be part of this good work with us. And if you are a student nurse, then membership is free. And uh, yeah, always feel free to check out our website, too, for useful resources that, um, that you might find helpful or to feel free to give us an email or some kind of communicate if we can be working on um, other resources for you or if you are interested in other other work or have questions around planetary health. We just want to be a resource for all of us Canadian nurses out there. And so, yeah, I really, um, I just feel really excited to, to be here giving you Canadian nurses the opportunity to learn a bit more about the Nurses Climate Challenge. And of course, hopefully you found this presentation to be just a good orientation to what is a really um, useful, practical initiative. And of course, on this last slide, it's just to acknowledge a lot of the really wonderful Canadian nurses that have been involved in updating these 23 resources for you. All of these nurses have done this work off the side of their desk. And um, yeah, and definitely, as you'll note on the slide, or you, you know, you'll note to some extent, yeah, we've had nurses involved um, really from, from across the nation. So that's been a really wonderful opportunity to work together. Uh, here in 2021. This work has happened amidst this global pandemic. So a big thank you to everyone that's been involved and a huge thank you to you, Shanda, and your teams for all of the amazing support that you've lent to us to be a part of what I think is just a, a fabulous piece of work and a fabulous tool. Hmm. 
Well, thank you, Jessica. And and to all of Kane and I mean, to all of the Canadian nurses, I just want to say congratulations. Um, you've done so much work already and, and to get this project across the finish line, I'm really excited that, um, that you'll have more to share with your team members. So we appreciate all of um, everyone's commitment to addressing climate change on behalf of nursing everywhere. And we could not do this without you. So thank you all for your commitment. And Jessica, I'll hand it to you, for final words. <laughs> right on. Thanks so much, Shanda. So yes, to, to all of you Canadian nurses out there, join us. Join us. We're a great wider team to work with and we'd love to have you aboard. So please click on the link. Even if you can't delve into this work right away, I certainly know I've been there. Being a frontline nurse is busy and especially this last year has been challenging on a whole new levels for all of us, but feel free to register anyway. You don't have to leap into this work right away, but um, even if you just get yourself registered, take the time slowly to familiarize yourself with some of the work, then, um, then you're one step closer to be engaged in this. So thank you again for your time.